Well, let's get back to our top story now. And ministers will meet later to consider measures into clearing the names of hundreds of sub-postmasters convicted in the Post Office Horizon scandal. Yeah, more than 700 branch managers were convicted of false accounting, theft and fraud based on faulty software. And two former sub-postmasters, Tracy Felstead and Janet Skinner, join us now on the sofa. Good morning to both Good of morning. you. Good morning. It's something we've talked about here on Breakfast over the years. It's been in the papers over the years. But this drama on ITV last week just seems to have taken it to a whole new level and the, the pressure on the, on the politicians to a whole new level. H how are you guys dealing with this and finding all this, this attention on you finally? quite hard work isn't it, it it's is. it's yeah it's really hard but it's for the good um, it needed to be done i think people needed to get a better insight of what we've had to actually go through for the past well you know two decades um and i think people get more understanding of of what it's been about i know there was a few there was there was quite a few people who were aware of the story but i just don't think they understood what the story was Take us through your story. Um, I was... Um, I had a shortfall of 59,000 in 2006 um, and I was sent to prison in 2007. And um, uh, you two, both of you, were sent to prison? Yep. yep. Yes. Which, and I think when you were only 19, Yeah, right? I was 19 when I went to prison. Um, so... I mean, how did that come about? What, what, was the, what were the circumstances for you? Because I think with this story, you're absolutely right in saying we kind of knew about the story, but it's hearing the personal experiences from real people that really brings it home how shocking it was. Yeah, I mean, I was accused of stealing £11,500 um, and I wouldn't plead guilty um, to something I hadn't done. Um, my family repaid the money um, to the post office without my knowing. Um, and then it kind of spiralled from there. I went to court, um, was found guilty um, through um, just my signature on, uh, on paperwork. There was no actual evidence of theft. And I was sent to Holloway at the age of 19. So the family, your family paid back the money and you still ended up in prison? Yes. Good as you say it is to have more people aware of what you and so many others have gone through because of the drama. How painful is it as well to have to, to go back through all of this? Or are you just going through it anyway? I anyway, think we're just going day. through it anyway, aren't yeah. we? Because yeah. of the inquiry, I mean, there's still quite a lot going on with that. Mm. Um, so, I mean, and we are core participants of the inquiry anyway. So, I mean, it's been ongoing for us <laughs> forever. It seems forever. Mm. But the drama... Um, I think it's just it just highlights everything. Um, watching it, I found found it very emotional. Watching it because we could relate to everything that was there. Yeah. Mm. Henry, our chief political correspondent, was in Westminster earlier, and telling us that MPs go back today after their Christmas yeah. break, and he was saying this is now at the very top of the political agenda for pressure on the government MPs to try and sort it out. What do you think they should be doing? What would you like to see happen straight away? Remove the post office. Remove the post office Remove from the, the process. Of... From the yeah. processes completely, because yeah. they have too much power over um, convictions being overturned or being referred to, um, to to the courts, and also even with the relation to compensation, they are the ones that are running the show. They need to be taken. They need to be removed from it completely. Yeah, it definitely. needs to be an independent body for the prosecutions and for the compensation schemes. I think that's one of the things that people have found really hard to get their head around. That in order this has happened now, but in order for the appeals process to be overturned, the post office has to be involved in that decision making yes. process. We it was five years for us, wasn't it? We we submitted yeah. our cases in 2015 to yes. the CCRC. And then they did the referral in 2020, and we didn't actually have our convictions over 10 until 2021. But when you when they referred our cases, there was two charges. So there was um, count you had limb one, which was the actual conviction, and then you had limb two, which was an abuse of process. Now limb one, which was the conviction, they didn't contest, but limb two they did. So they decide what they're going to contest and what they're not going to contest. 
The government, Rishi Sunak, yesterday being questioned on the BBC by uh, Lord <coughs> Coonsberg, was saying, you know, we're acting on this. The Justice Secretary's, you know, got various options in front of him. To what extent do you think they're taking this seriously because of the profile of the drama? He, I don't think he took it very seriously, to be honest. He made a couple of mistakes when he was reading, when he was speaking about it yesterday. He said it's something that's happened in the 90s. It happened, it started, it was rolled out in 1999, and then the issues became apparent in 2000, no sooner had it been rolled out. And then he also stated that everybody was to receive up to a £600,000 interim payment. No, it's not. not it's a £600,000 take it or leave it payment Full is what it is. Payment, Full and final is. It's not interim, and that's what he was stated yesterday. And, Tracy, in terms of the... There's now a police investigation uh, looking into this. The Metropolitan Police have got involved because not no member of the post office or anyone involved with it, there's never been any sort of criminal conviction on that front. What would you like to see happen? Somebody held accountable, um, most definitely. I mean, they need to look at it. We were, we were classed as criminals by the post office. Now it's their turn to, to actually be investigated and find out who knew what, why. And when this all happened, it's just, you know, somebody needs to be held accountable for everybody. Hearing that it wouldn't be too complicated for Parliament to pass some kind of act which could overturn all of these convictions in one go, rather than having to be individual appeals, go through the post office, that, that it could be relatively straightforward if the political will was there. Do you think the will is there now? I think it is, and I think it needs to be <coughs> independent. Um, at the same time, I think we need to be really careful that we're not just going to go and turn everybody's convictions over, um, just in case you have that one person that has committed a crime and you've just, com you've just turned over their, their conviction. So I think we have to be careful with what we're doing. I do think it's possible and I do think the will's there and I do think that they have the power to do that. Um, but I think we need to be really careful when we're doing it, but it also needs to be quicker. Independent. Um, yeah, independent. and independent, yeah. And both of you, there is an online petition, about a million people, I think, have signed it so far, yeah. calling for yeah. Paula Venels, who ran the post office throughout much of the, the, uh, the 2010s, uh, to have her CBE removed. Would you support that? Yes. yes. She should have. Absolutely. Yeah. In yeah, my eyes, she shouldn't have had it in the first place. No, and if, to be fair, she, if she had any decency, she, she would just hand it back. Thank, Thank you, you to both. both of us. Thank, Thank you both you. for coming in. I got a message from one of our viewers a few moments ago saying her CB should re be removed and handed to Alan Bates instead. I think there's a yeah. lot of people that yeah. deserve recognition for this story. Yeah. Thank you both. Thank, Thank you. you. Indeed.